<laughs> All right. Well, I also wanted to um, not neglect our friends that are live streaming. So we know we have a couple hundred students that do study in an online format or that will be here coming to campus face to face that are actually live streaming the program tonight. So we haven't forgotten about you guys. But we are going to get right to it. So um, the agenda for the evening, everything that we are doing from this point forward, you have a copy of. So I like to say that we're green, but this is the one day of the year that we are not green. We're giving you all the things. So again, my name is Christian Gam. I'm the director of graduate education. And so um, everyone in this room has probably gotten one, two, 10, 20 maybe emails um, with my name on it. So um, this is your opportunity to put a face with a name all of a sudden. So we're gonna go through and give you a quick policy and support strategies dump of all things in KU, what it means to be a graduate student here and what you need to know to be successful. And so we've printed out the slides. If you need to take notes or something just doesn't sound right or if I am um, waving an alarm flag, you're like, oh my goodness, that's me. I have a problem. Take a note. Haley and I will both be here um, and then we are here every day. So if you have questions, reach out our way. If you are live streaming, if you have questions about anything that you are seeing or hearing, send us an email. We are monitoring our email to graduates at nku.edu, your questions, and we will get them answered for everyone. All right, so we are gonna get started, as I said. So, the first thing that you need to know. So everyone in this room, fingers crossed, should have been admitted to NKU. So if you haven't been admitted yet, we need to talk ASAP. Do not wait until tomorrow. Probably can still make it work, however. All right, so in your admission letter, it would have said, congratulations, Haley North, you have been fully admitted. Fantastic, you don't need to take any action. If it said, congratulations, Haley North, you've been provisionally admitted to X program, what does that mean? That means that you owe us something or you oh, in, the, in the form of maybe a final transcript. Maybe you were admitted in March and you didn't graduate with your, your bachelor's degree or your master's degree yet. We need that from you. You may also have been admitted and it said, you have been admitted provisionally pending you take stats 205 or that you get a B or better in your first three courses. So making sure that you know what that admission letter says because that's gonna prevent you from not only registering for the spring semester, but the real kicker, it's gonna prevent you from getting financial aid in the spring semester, okay? So no questions or dumb questions when it comes to this because it's really important. All right. So missing documents, GPA or grade requirements, make sure you know that. If you were admitted in a situation where you need to get a certain GPA or you need to take certain classes, you are gonna have to wait until those grades come in at the end of the fall term to be able to register before that. Registration begins, I think, November 2nd, but you're probably gonna have to wait until like December 20th. Is what it is, we'll make sure you get into a course. Don't freak out, promise. All right, also in that admission letter, if you are not an online student, it would have said that you have been classified as a resident, a non-resident, or a grad metro resident, meaning that you live in the state of Ohio or Indiana for tuition purposes. If you are in an online program, it's not gonna say that because there is no difference in terms of residency for that student group. So that's also a big deal because that's gonna determine how your tuition has been billed. Okay, so resident, a lot cheaper than non-resident, so make sure we've got it right. And if we need to change that, we can have that conversation if it does need to be changed, if you feel like it needs to be changed. All right, so also in your admission letter, we would have asked you to activate your NKU username and set up your password. This is critical because now that you are a student, we are only going to communicate with you to your NKU email address. So make sure that you know, go to the IT website, whatever you need to do, but make sure you know that if you have a Gmail, a Hotmail, an AOL, whatever that is, some of y'all still have them, I know you do, make sure that it's forwarding to your NKU email address. That's critical. So not receiving the email is not gonna be an okay situation with a faculty member. That same username and password will work for all things NKU logins. 
your email, your Canvas account, your MyNKU, so making sure you know what that is. And if you don't know, that's okay. Send us an email, give us a call, we'll help you out. And that's a quick way to know what your email address is or how to get into that email. So your username is your email address. Your username was in your admission letter. So it would have been all caps with a number at the end. So webmail.nku.edu, you probably have already been receiving emails. Make sure you log in to see if you've already been receiving emails, especially if you're in an online course. If, if notifications from your course are being sent, they're going to that email. My NKU student portal, how many of you are registered for courses right now? Okay, not a lot of hands were not raised, so that is awesome. If you're live streaming, I hope all of your hands are raised in your kitchen, wherever you are watching this. So if you haven't already, make sure that you familiarize yourself with the student portal. This is a portal where you registered for courses. If for some reason your program registered you for courses, make sure you know how to do it next time, okay? So from there, you can update your student records, you can update your address at any time, you can always look at what your transcript looks like, your unofficial one. Also, financial aid is there. So financial aid will put all of your awards that you have been awarded out in your My NKU on the financial aid tab. There's also a bill or direct tab, and that's where you'll see your tuition bill, and you can also pay there. So make sure you familiarize yourself with those before Monday. Questions? All right. And just a couple quick screenshots for you. Some other things that you can do in my NKU. If you need to change your name, if you get married, your address, all of those things you can do. Under the student records tab, you can see on there your degree audits. So meaning what do you need to do to take to complete your degree? What have you already taken? What's still outstanding? Your grades and then any transfer credit. So if you're bringing in transfer credit, you'll see it there. Also academics. So if you're not sure what your course schedule looks like, where am I supposed to be when? Make sure you check that out. If you also want, need to order books online from the bookstore, there's a link for you to do that there. All right, so again, no, we're kind of beating a dead horse here, but we really want to make sure that you know your way around this. So the self-service in terms of registration, what's key for this screen, lots of MBA courses on there, is to make sure on the dates. So on the dates, some of our courses, depending on if you're an online student or if you're an accelerated online student, the courses do not follow a normal schedule. So if you're an MBA student, you're taking courses in five weeks. So you wanna make sure that you know what five week session your course is in. The same if you are in pretty much any nursing pro all nursing programs, I'm just gonna go ahead and say that. All nursing programs are seven weeks. So making sure that you know that you have not registered for a course that begins in October, thinking it's starting on Monday. So double checking that. So the last day to add courses for fall will be Monday, August 26th. So if you need to make any adjustments to your schedule, doing it by that day. If you're in a seven week class, the last day to add will be next Thursday. Same for MBA five weeks students. So if you're in a 16 week course, it's Monday the 26th. If not, it's this upcoming Thursday, a day from tomorrow. All right, so unless you have a hold on your account, you can register for, for as many classes as you want until you hit that magic 12 credit hour number. At the end of your course, so we're gonna fast forward to October, we're gonna fast forward to December here. You're gonna get, um, you're gonna get an email from NKU, and I think it actually is from evaluations at NKU, that's gonna say, hey, tell us how your instructor did. So two things that you can do here. And this is important because if you don't do them. So we want you to complete the evaluation for your instructor. So we really do listen to those. It's not just lip service here at NKU. So either complete it or there is a little box that says opt out. So if you don't either complete it or opt out, you're not gonna be able to see your grades for two to three weeks after they come in. 
So a little bit punitive, we know, but make sure you pay attention to that email. So let's say things aren't going so well and you need to withdraw from a course. The same way that you booked a course is also how you withdraw from a course. So you're sliding it from one column to another in the registration portal. So cancel and delete registration is how you'll do that from the drop down. Want to make sure that you refer to the academic calendar depending on when you withdraw from a course may depend on whether or not you're getting a refund from that course. So there are certain refund dates associated with that in terms of whether we'll give you all of that tuition back, 25%, 50%. So make sure you know what the implications are. Also make sure you know what the implications are in terms of financial aid. So if you need to be a full or a part-time student to be aid eligible, that could make a big difference in terms of whether or not that financial aid gets um, taken back from you. So we don't wanna go into any of those types of situations. Speaking of financial aid, making sure again, a screenshot here that you know how to access that aid. If you are in an online accelerated program, your bill, including any financial aid, has to come through and be paid in full by the, the last day to add courses. So if not, you'll be withdrawn from those courses for non-payment. So making sure that you know exactly where to find that information, not ignoring the emails about payments, because um, we know we send you a lot, we'll own it, but making sure that you're reading those, taking action as necessary. And if you're not sure what any of those things mean, reach out. Reach out to the financial aid office. Um, one um, caveat I'll give you, just making sure, I feel like it's ethically important to say to students, if you are awarded loans, student loans at the graduate level, we're awarding you pretty much every time the maximum amount that we can award you. So make sure if you are accepting loans that you don't just say accept all, choose the amount you need. You probably don't need $20,000 for your first semester at NKU. We are affordable. So making sure that you do that and not getting yourself into any kind of fiscal distress, um, being paying close attention to that. So again, here's the Biller Direct tab. So on this tab, you can do a couple things. So obviously you can pay your bill. If you are um, receiving aid and you are getting a refund back, this is how you link your bank account to get that refund directly back into your bank. Also, when it comes time for January, this is where you're going to get your um, 1098T form for your taxes. So we're not going to mail it to you. You're just going to go out there and get it for yourself. All right. So a couple important offices that you need to know about, almost all of them were here. So the registrar's office, if you are in a program that you need verification of your, um, your studies for employment, for tuition reimbursements, if you need transcripts, any kind of student record situations, if you are deferring your prior student loans, if you're in that situation and you need to, you need to show proof of um, registration, we can do that for you financial aid, if you have not completed your FAFSA, get on your phone and do it right now for fall, um, but they can help you with aid eligibility, any kind of loan deferment, as I just said. Student account services were here earlier. The IT help desk, we'll go into that in a couple. And then your program director or advisor, who here was able to meet with a faculty member, speak with a faculty member tonight? Yes, everyone. Our live streaming friends will make sure you are connected to who those people are to schedule an appointment. But your program director advisor can always make sure that you are connected to the right place. So in your packet of information, there's a master list with their direct office numbers, direct email addresses for every program. Make sure you know who that person is so that you, you establish a rapport with them so that if you do have questions or if you get into any kind of distress academically, personally, you have that resource on our campus. All right. So NKU has a non-attendance policy. So let's talk about what this means. So you may have received an email or you may receive an email on Monday saying students are expected to attend the first course, first course session. 
If you are an online student, don't panic. You don't have to come here, totally okay. But what you do need to do is log into Canvas. So we are able to tell when students log into Canvas, log into each of your Canvas courses. Make sure you go into the Canvas shell. Click on a module or two to be safe. But we want to make sure that you are present in that first class, whether it is physically here or if it is in Canvas, or else your instructor has to drop you from that course. So we do that as a part of our financial aid verification. So we want to make sure students that are um, receiving aid are receiving aid for classes and not just signing up and then bouncing. All right, Canvas. So many of you, if you are a returning student, um, you may be familiar with Canvas. Your university may have used Blackboard. Who's used Blackboard? Yep, so Canvas is like Blackboard but it's called Canvas, not Blackboard. <laughs> so to log into Canvas, it's simply canvas.nku.edu, same username and password. This is where all of your courses are, okay? So a couple days before the courses uh, start, those courses will be opened on Canvas and you'll be able to see that. If you're an online student, and this is especially important for online students in the, in the nursing programs in the College of Health and Human Services, you have also been uploaded into an online orientation Canvas site for all online students. If you are in a nursing program, there is a module within that online orientation, a HIPAA module, that you are required to complete. If you are not in a nursing program and you are an online student, you're being put into that, that's there as a resource for you as an online learner. If you're a face-to-face -face student and you think, hey, I want in, send us an email and we'll put you in it. But letting you know that it is there for you, um, it has lots of resources for you, so there's, it's always a one-stop shop since you're not here on campus to know all the things in terms of being connected and how to learn in that, in that medium. And this is what it looks like once you're in Canvas. And so on the bottom there, you'll see all of your courses on the dashboard. So apparently I'm in online orientation and graduate council and the master of social work. So that's fun. But all of your courses will be there. And then you also will receive messages through those courses. So sometimes they'll be in your email. Sometimes they'll just be in Canvas. So it's really important to make sure that you're checking both of those. So we did have a representative here from IT in our software department. So we uh, share this information with you because uh, NKU students have access to free micro the free Microsoft suite of um, software. So um, on that link that is on there, check that out. You can download free software. So if you need Word on your computer, whatever you need, um, check out the software catalog. If you need Adobe for your program, if you need Adobe for whatever, Check that out there. Okay, so policy talks. So we've given you some resources. So part of what we do in the Office of Graduate Education is we admit you, we recruit you, we welcome you, and then once you're here, we're tracking what you're up to in your, in your classroom, okay? So graduate students, um, the level of rigor is much different than when you were an undergrad, or it might even be a little bit different than if you are a doctoral student um, coming back for a degree. So all of our students are required to maintain a 3.0 cumulative GPA. So a lot higher than undergrad. So any students that are below that um, are considered on academic probation. So a little bit of a Debbie Downer talk here, but want to make sure that you know what the expectations are. So if you find yourself on academic probation, it could be you could be performing well, but just one B minus will get you on academic probation, y'all. So make sure that you know what those grades look like um, and what what the um, repercussions are if, if, you're, if you're underneath. So students on probation can have nine credit hours to get back up into good standing. After that point, we'll decide with your program director whether or not we feel like you can continue to be successful or um, if we wanna grant you a little bit more time there. Um, related to that, grades of C. So um, a grade of a C is kind of like getting a 2.0. So there are some grades of some programs that will allow students to get C's. Um, there are some programs that they can't get any C's. So make sure you know what your program specific handbook and guidelines look like, whether or not that that's permitted. So in general, a student can have two, but then after that, you know, we'll have to have that talk again about academic probation. 
Um, we talked a little bit about financial aid and enrollment status, but for graduate school at NKU, six credit hours over the entire semester is considered full time. So if you need to know that, um, that is for financial aid purposes. Also, if you need any kind of employment verification, insurance verification, six credit hours. Three is part time. So if you are looking to, um, if you haven't already, be eligible for federal financial aid, you have to be enrolled in, a, in at least three credit hours. And that's over the entire semester. So if you're taking courses and subsessions, that's considered over the entire semester. So degree completion. This is your first week here. Technically, if you're a master's or a certificate student, you have six years. So we don't want you here for six years. We want you to finish. If you're a doctoral student, our EDD friends in the back, you have eight years. We want to see you gone in three, however. So work hard, ladies, at the back table. So if for some reason life happens, it's all good. We understand. That's why we have, that's why we have those timelines there. Um, if you are getting close to those timelines, let's have a conversation to make sure we know um, what you need to do to, to be successful to complete in a timely fashion. If you are bringing in transfer work, or if you have some old courses from a prior degree, anything that you're graduating with, any courses, including transfer, they can't be older than eight years. So um, our programs are rigorous, we're preparing you for the real world, but we want you to graduate here with current knowledge. So eight years. So we do have a couple exceptions. We to pretty much all of our policies that we can always talk through and work through. So if you feel like you have some transfer credit or some old credit from a prior master's degree that's getting old, we can talk about what, what the possibilities are for you. Speaking of transfer credit, so um, we know a lot of you have been to other places and um, are, are now landing here with us. So if you do have transfer credit coming over here, um, you can transfer up to 40% of your total program. So if you're in a 30 hour program, that's 12 credit hours. So simple math, um, they do have to be from a regionally accredited institution. So making sure that um, the institution that it's coming from is, is legit there. Um, we have a list of those that are, that are not regionally accredited, so if you have questions, we could, we could tell you pretty quickly off the top of our heads. Um, be or better from that, and they have to have been taken for grad credit. So if you were a stellar undergrad student and were taking some 500 or 600 level courses as an undergrad, they have to be taken as a, at the grad student level. So if you have those uh, transfer credits out there, making sure first that you're having a conversation with your graduate program director. So again, all those people are on the list that we've either put in your hands tonight or emailed to you. Um, but that person will make that determination of, yes, this course equals this NKU course, and then forward it on my way for a final approval. Another great um, option for NKU students is the GCCCU, the Greater Cincinnati Consortium of Colleges and Universities. So we are in partnership with all of our local schools that if uh, one of our students wishes to take a course at let's say UC or Xavier, it's a course that we don't offer and you're really interested in it and want to get that knowledge, you can take a course with them at the same tuition rate as NKU. So no extra hoops to jump through, um, just simply a couple forms here, your program director and I will sign for you and we'll make that happen. So this is especially helpful for some reason you get off sequence or your course that you need to graduate isn't being offered for whatever reason. So we can help you make sure that you stay on track and complete when you feel like you need to complete and, and, and make sure that your plans are being met there. Questions? Any questions from the email account? Two questions, okay. Yeah, so defining show your face for an online class is simply logging into each Canvas course. So you don't actually have to show your face. Um, we've, oh, we are actually in um, talks with marketing to rebrand that entire campaign because it's confusing. We own it, it's confusing. So showing your face means something totally different for online. Yeah. 
Yeah, so if you're taking seven or five week courses, do you register for the entire semester all at once or can you do it as you go? And the answer is yes and yes. So if you need to be registered as a full-time student for financial aid purposes, register at the beginning of the semester so you can be packaged for full-time aid. If you don't need to do that, you can register and pay as you go. So if you register for courses in five week one and five week two, the entire tuition bill for both five week one and five week two is gonna be due next week. So the beauty of being able to register and pay as you go is that you register after the billing date has passed for your next subsession. If not, that bill is gonna show for the entire semester that you owe all up front. Question, yep. Yep, so the, the question was, when do you register for the second subsession, whether a five or a seven? So you need to register for that the Thursday before the, the, the class starts. So if you wanna go ahead and register for it the week after next, just to make sure you're good, feel free to do that too, but you won't have to pay for it until it starts. Great questions, okay. So graduate catalog, so also in your admission letter, we would have put some really policy heavy language about your catalog of record. So make sure you know what courses you are bound to follow. So NKU um, is nimble in the sense that we're able to change our catalog and our curriculum um, in such a way to make it relevant to students but that also means it's changing. So you have been, you may have been admitted in your program was let's say 36 credit hours. And now the program is retooled and it's a 33 credit hour program. You're bound by the catalog that you were admitted under with the caveat, you can change it. So if you decide, let's say the nursing program has a really cool new concentration and you want in on it, we can do that for you. But if you have been following a, a program of study and you didn't tell us you were changing, then you're gonna be bound by the old one. So we wanna make sure that you know what courses you have to take according to your catalog year. So website is super easy, catalog.nku.edu, all of the policies and probably 100 pages more of policies are all listed in there. So um, we, the expectation is that students know where it is, you familiarize yourself with, with it and you are being held by those policies. So again, if you wanna change your catalog year, you can do that, no worries. It's a form on our website, on the grad school website. If you decide that you wanna change your concentration, so let's say that you are a family nurse practitioner concentration and you want to change to psych mental health. Again, we can change that for you as well. Um, just a quick catalog uh, form change there. If you decide that you are uh, an MBA student and you have seen the lights and now you wanna be a school teacher and you wanna change your program, that's a different situation. So if you're changing from one program to another program, you have to, be, uh, you have to reapply and be rescreened there. So if you ever have questions, if, if life has thrown you a curveball and you wanna switch it up, we can work through what those options are for you and the easiest way to get it done. Graduate certificates and micro-credentials are a cool added bonus to all of our master's programs and doctoral programs here. So you can add on a graduate certificate to any of our programs. And so our graduate certificates are 18 credit hours in length. Many of our programs have already embedded within their curriculum all of the courses you need to earn that extra credential. So for instance, if you are in the integrative, integrative studies program, you can take all of your core courses in business informatics and business analytics and get a certificate. So making sure that you know um, what your options are, asking your program director for that. So if you do decide to do that, one hoop to jump through, you have to apply for that certificate. So if you're already in a master's program, the least amount of work we're probably gonna ask you is to give us a quick personal statement about why you wanna add this extra thing to your plan of study. Most likely you'll be admitted, 99% of the time you're gonna be admitted, and then we'll add that, and when you graduate from here, you're getting two um, credentials from us instead of one. Who here knows what a micro-credential is? One person, yeah. So it's terminology that um, NKU is kind of 
kind of sort of made up, um, along with maybe a handful of other colleges in the, in the country. So a micro-credential is a quick package of competencies, not a certificate, definitely not a degree, but um, competencies in a certain area. So for instance, we have a micro-credential in navigating the diverse workplace. Definitely not a master's degree, but three courses that you can put together. We have learning outcomes associated with those that say, yes, this person has taken these courses and they have this, essentially a badge to say, here you go, you, you know how to do X, or you have learned how to do X. So our social work students, many of them are picking up a micro-credential called trauma-focused care. Fantastic for them, another little added bonus when they are finished with us to also put on their resume and typically not any additional coursework, maybe, eh, sometimes maybe a, a, an extra course. So there's a website, um, nku.edu backslash micro-credentials. If there are things that look um, entertaining to you or appeal to you, give us a call. We'll work through if it makes sense for you and what your plans are and how to do it if so. Questions on any of these things? Haley, okay. Graduate assistantships. So some of you that um, are more of our traditional age students coming right out of undergrad or maybe have sat out for a couple years may be interested if you um, haven't already in being a graduate assistantship. So all of our programs have a small amount of funding available to hire graduate assistants. And so what this means is that those students will work in a particular um, office or maybe on a project or maybe in a student services office for uh, 10 to 24 hours per week and we will pay you um, an hourly rate um, 14 16 ish dollars for that time and um, cover your tuition as well so if you are interested in being considered for one, almost all of them are full. We do have some mid-year vacancies that do pop up um, in, in the spring and then always again in the next fall. It's almost like a, um, a, a temp website where you submit your credentials, we'll have your credentials, and then programs or offices that are looking to hire will have your information out there and can call you if, if something aligns. But again, the benefits there is that in-state tuition um, up to nine credit hours is covered and that hourly rate. You do have to have a 3.0 GPA and to maintain that, but um, you have to do that anyways to stay in good standing. So a couple of other things um, and then we will wrap up here. So um, miscellaneous policies. So if you registered before last week, you would have gotten an email from our Student Conduct Rights and Advocacy Office about um, sexual assault prevention for grad students. So um, it's highly encouraged for all of you to um, fill that out. If you are employed on campus, you have to complete that module, but that's what that is for. So part of our Title IX compliance there. Um, the Code of Student Rights and Responsibilities is simply all the rules students need to follow, right, that aren't, that aren't in, in the graduate catalog. So um, if you feel like you need to know what the tobacco policy is on campus, that's where it is. Anything else under the sun. Um, graduate Student Honor Code is something that you do want to make yourself familiar with. So there are certain parts of the Graduate Student Honor Code that um, are really critical for students to follow and um, if, if there are violations could, could result in not being able to continue at NKU. So the first one is plagiarism. Make sure you know how NKU defines plagiarism and make sure that you are doing everything you need to do to cite your things appropriately, do not copy others' work. Um, NKU does use a couple software services that we run student work through, so it will pop up pretty much immediately if you're um, lifting some things from others and not citing it. So know what that looks like, not to scare you off, but know what that looks like. Research misconduct is the same. So um, lots of information there about research misconduct and um, making sure that you're following by those rules and then ethical violations. So this is super important if your program has a practicum or an internship component. You're doing work with clients, with others outside of the walls of NKU at a third party. So you have to not only um, abide by your program standards but also our standards and um, that third party's standard. So if you are misbehaving in a research site or a, a practicum site, um, that's big business. So make sure you know what that looks like as you get a little closer to time. 
Okay, so one.nku.edu, all of the websites I have referenced, all of the logins, all of the places, they are all right there for you. So that's again what that website looks like. So if you have no idea, remember nothing, lost your handouts, one.nku.edu. And if you haven't already, highly encourage you to download the NKU mobile app. So I said that we're, um, we like to be sustainable and go green. You can do pretty much everything these days on the mobile app. Register for courses, see what your holds are on your account, um, pay your bill, look at your grades, do all the things. You can answer your email on there. So log on to Canvas. Not sure how well that might be, but um, so downloading that. It's new and improved and a really fabulous tool. Also want to make sure that you opt in to NKU's emergency contact system, the NORSE alert. So you want to register, you can choose to get text, emails, or voice alerts. So if there's any kind of um, campus situation going on um, in terms of a safety situation, you need to know that. Also, if you are, um, you know, right now the weather's beautiful. We might get a nice storm in December. Let's hope. Might get a free day out of school. So making sure that you know whether or not to come to campus or if your instructors cannot make it, if you're online and they will not be logging in for any reason, maybe they don't have power, make sure you know what those alerts look like. We had a lot of severe weather alerts back in, back in um, April. So make sure you do that. And then lastly, our office. So um, Haley, myself, and the women that checked you in out at the front table were a small but mighty group. But if you are on campus or if you decide to visit campus, we're in the Administrative Center 302. If you need anything, whether it is um, trouble in the classroom, you're not connecting with someone well, you have a faculty issue, you need a hold, you just want to say hi, you want to come and get some more free swag, you want to eat the leftover cookies from tonight and come back tomorrow and do that, come visit us. We love visitors. So, um, But we're here to make your um, transition to graduate school or re-transition to graduate school for our doctoral students um, easy and seamless. So everything that you heard tonight about NKU being a welcoming place, it's not just lip service, it's true. We want you to be successful um, and represent NKU well and have a good experience. So, and you can do that also apparently by following us on Facebook. So we send out messages that way, but really um, email is our jam. So answer your email, pay attention to your email, please, please, please. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Haley. So much about the graduate student experience is not just um, what you learn, but those peer connections. And so um, Haley's gonna work us through how to meet people tonight. So if you are live streaming, have a great night. We appreciate you logging in. Those of you that are here, I'm gonna turn it over to Haley. Friends. <laughs> 